New York City is a melting pot. It's a city where you can walk down the street and hear five different languages before you step foot off your block. Yeah, yeah. And if there's a food you want to eat, you can find it in New York City. In this video, we're going to try foods from around the world without even leaving Manhattan. So stay tuned. What is going on guys? Today we're in New York City. I'm joined by Sophie. And what are we doing today? Uh, food for you. Today we're doing a food tour of New York City. Our first stop is Ukraine Village. Let's go. Okay. Little Ukraine is located on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. So we hopped on a train and headed downtown. We had to transfer at Times Square, which is notorious for its live performers. So we checked out this band on our way and got to witness some pretty epic drum fakes. You might not have heard of Little Ukraine because it's kind of a hidden gem in the city, but to those who know about it, it's well beloved. In fact, there's even a movie about it. I don't think I should be here. This is the time when I need my son to protect me. You'll know you've arrived to Little Ukraine when you start seeing Ukrainian letters and flags. The restaurant we went to, Veselka, has been serving traditional Ukrainian food here for almost 70 years. It was pretty packed when we got there, but the wait staff didn't seem to mind. We're waiting for our food. I got a coffee. What do you think so far? I like the water. Some top-notch tap water, <laughs> for sure. So we just got some pierogies. It looks like it comes with applesauce and sour cream. Sophie, have you ever had pierogies before? Yeah. With you. That's true, we had pierogies the other night. That was in preparation for this, so we can compare them. The frozen store-bought pierogies to traditional homemade Ukrainian pierogies. Mm. This is like the meat one? Yeah. Mm. We got the boiled pierogies. You can also get them fried. But I guess we're trying to be healthy or something. <laughs> mm. Sauerkraut and potatoes. So I'm gonna try it with some of this applesauce because I think that's a weird combination. Okay, I don't like that combination at all. That's not good. <laughs> so we came for the pierogies, but we couldn't leave without trying these award-winning blintzes. What is a blintz? Blintz is like crepes? With cheese and... Mm. It's like cheese, but with sugar. Came with a raspberry sauce, applesauce, and is that sour cream? Yeah. Tried. All the food comes with sour cream, which is interesting. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. It's good. Mm. 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 It's good, but you don't love it? Yeah. Mm. I think you definitely have to eat it with the sauce. It's like cottage cheese, almost, is what it tastes like in the middle. It's good. It's like grapes with cottage cheese in the middle. But the, you definitely need the sauce, because I think the sauce gives it a lot of flavor. After we both tried something new, we decided to go for an old familiar. Well, for Sophie at least. We headed just a few blocks away to Los Tacos Numero Uno, a taqueria that brings southwest flavor to the east coast. You won't find ground beef or hard shells with these tacos, they serve them just how you'd find them in Mexico. La mejor parte es que también tiene So we ordered one of everything. We got one chicken, one pork, one beef, and one of nopales, which is like cactus. Nice. Good, I like it. Is it like authentic? Kind of, yeah, it's kind of the same, but maybe less spicy, I think. Doesn't taste exactly the same as the original ones that we had in Mexico. There's definitely more meat, 
Like they they pack it a little bit more. I'd say like it doesn't have as much juice. Like it's not as like yeah. juicier. It's a little bit drier, but it's basically like spot on. Delicious. I feel like if you want to taste of Mexico City in New York City, this is where you need to come to. We also tried the horchata. It's the same. <laughs> Next, we gave the chicken taco a try. Sophie had never tried Chipotle. Next we tried the beef taco. A good one. This is the nopales one, the cactus. Nice vegetarian option. I think that my favorite is the chicken one. I don't know, I think my favorite is the beef one. The beef one's good. Yeah. I like that one too. Okay, so that was spot number two. You may notice that it's nighttime now. We started kind of late and it's February. 5.30 right now and it's already dark. But that's the way it is in New York City. Luckily, we don't have to go far to make it to Chinatown. Okay, it's like a 20, <laughs> 18 minute walk. Tasty dumpling in Chinatown. It had good reviews online, and it, there's a lot of people here actually right now. So it looks good. It's cheap. This is like, as far as price, this is my favorite place we've been to because this was four dollars for eight dumplings. So a plate of dumplings for four dollars. I mean, that's really good. Yeah. And it's like a very like hole in the wall type place, like low key for sure. Which makes me think it's like probably pretty good. Like it's probably authentic. Yeah. It smells really good. Okay, let's try. It's really good. I yeah. like it. Yeah. It smells good. The pork is really juicy mm -hmm. and very umami flavored. There wasn't much to say about these dumplings. They were cheap and delicious. Enough so that you could easily forget the grade pending sign in the window and the grungy interior. We even bought a second plate before we headed to the next location for dessert. New York City is probably the only place in the world where you can be surrounded by Chinese culture and then cross the street and feel like you're in Naples, Italy. We went to Ferreira Bakery and Cafe, which has been serving espresso and gelato for more than a century in Little Italy. We got some gelato. Sophie got the Nutella flavor. I think she liked it. I got the stracciatelli gelato and we also got some macaroons and espresso. Overall, Ferreras is an awesome place for that traditional Italian cafe feel, and it's a great place to take a date. What? Oof, it's cold out. Yeah. Okay, so that was good. That was good, Little Italy. I feel like it was really sweet. That was the first place we went to where we actually took a bag because we couldn't eat it all. We didn't finish the macarons. Yeah. Oh, it was so good, but it was very sweet. Oh, I think we're starting to tap out, but we have one more place to go. This one's a long walk. It's like 45 minutes. But yeah, but we need that. <laughs> like, We're gonna burn the calories from the yeah. food tour. Also, I want to say that that place was expensive. <laughs> really expensive. I'm not mad because I like it, uh -huh. but I spent a lot of money there. Yeah, yeah. you decided to, you <laughs> yeah. offered to pay I was for like, the most expensive oh, one. Yeah. I paid for this one and then I, I feel like I regret. The Nutella gelato was really good. Yeah, I like your gelato too. Yeah? It's like whipped cream. Yeah, it tasted and like I whipped cream. It was just like cream. sweet cream, stracciatelli sweet cream with chocolate chips. But I only saw two chocolate chips. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in, in I got there. only sweet, only <laughs> cream. There was like no chocolate. Yeah, like when I saw the... The next place we went to was Koreatown, and the more I go to Koreatown, the more and more I love it because there's just so much to do there. A ton of great food, karaoke bars, and Korean barbecue. We ended up stopping at this bar for a nightcap, and I tried soju, which is a Korean drink I had never tried before. I got the apple flavor. It was really good, and Sophie got a cocktail. 
there was k-pop blaring and it was overall just a really fun cool way to end the night if you made it to the end of the video cheers to you don't forget to like and subscribe thank you so much for watching and as always until the next one give travel i will see you guys later